This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop on research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared by students, faculty, alumni, and other members of the USC community. Hello, folks, and welcome back to another episode of the Viterbi Voices podcast. My name is Cameron. I am one of your co-hosts. I'm a senior studying computer science and business administration here at the Viterbi School of Engineering. And this week, I'm actually not joined by my typical co-host, Paula Desma, the senior director of undergraduate admissions for the Viterbi School of Engineering. For a little bit of context, April is by far the funnest month, but also one of the most busy months. As you guys know, and you guys are probably going through, it's the month where you're essentially deciding where you're going to college and where you're spending your next four years. And this is the time when the admissions office puts so many events and so much programming out there, and we have tons and tons of students coming to campus. It's a fun time for the admissions office because they get to actually meet you guys and meet the people behind the applications that they read. It's also fun for us because we get a chance to go to the events, talk to you guys, and share some of the experiences about why we chose to come to USC and why we love the Turkey. But with that being said, there's so many things going on, so many schedules, not to mention we're still students. I know for me personally, finals is literally in two weeks as the semester is wrapping up. I'm dealing with final projects, getting ready to prep for my finals, as well as being a senior. Commencement is literally less than a month away. And that's crazy to think about as the engineering school journey is finally coming to an end. So as a result, sometimes schedules just don't quite work out. And this is definitely one of those weeks where we just couldn't carve out enough time to get me and Paul in the same area. However, the show still must go on. With that being said, this week's episode, I'm interviewing one of my old friends, Natalie Le. She's a senior studying civil engineering, building science from San Diego, California. I'll let her talk more about her experience, her major and whatnot. But I just want to interview her for the podcast because I think that her involvement and why she chose engineering and why she came to USC can really just hopefully serve as some inspiration to folks out there who may go through some of the same struggles in deciding what she wants to do for college and also just seeing her involvements and really just showing what you can do if you really take advantage of a lot of the resources at Viterbi. So with that out the way, we'll go ahead and get to the main body of the episode. All right, welcome to the main body of the podcast. And I am very glad to be joining someone with, I know very well, Natalie, and welcome to the podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. Of course. Is this your first time being on the podcast? I always assume not, but it could be. Is this your first time? Uh, no, I did a couple in the past. I, I was even on the other side of it where I recorded as the host of podcast, but I haven't done that in a while. Really? Okay. So see, so we got a little bit of a dream team, you know, coming here with the experienced podcasters and whatnot. Um, yeah. Well, first things first, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Uh, for context, everyone, we have like, what, two weeks left in the semester, I think, roughly? Is yes. That right? Yeah, yeah, it's Thursday of this week, so two more full weeks left. Yeah, it's certainly rough out there. Um, finals are coming up. Natalie's a senior, so she's graduating as long as I'm graduating. So things are just going crazy. Um, but <laughs> anyway, Natalie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the pod for those who may have not remembered the episode that you hosted and developed a, a little bit ago. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Natalie, everyone. Um, I... As Cameron mentioned, I'm a senior. I'm studying civil engineering, building science. So building science is kind of like a little emphasis in architecture. Um, And I'm from San Diego, California. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you mentioned kind of like what building science is. I found myself recently telling a lot of students who come here that like, they're always like, oh, you know, I'm really interested in architecture, but I don't want to do five years to get an architecture degree. I really like engineering and I'm like math and science. And I'm always like, boy, do I have the major for you. (laughs) <laughs> like, like the salesman of like, you know, if you listen right here, folks, I'll tell you about the next great major. You have civil engineering built, you know, something like that. Um, no, exactly. <laughs> That's the perfect combination of everything I wanted, because I was like, I don't think I'm artistic enough to be an architect. And, and I know I like math and science. So civil engineering works really well with that. Also, I just like didn't have a portfolio. and That's kind of what you need to apply architecture. And I was like, eh. <laughs> mm, I see. Uh, yeah. So I guess <laughs> screw it. We can just go ahead and go into it and talk about it. So like what made you interested in doing civil engineering um, and then I guess why do you end up picking building science as your emphasis? For sure. Yeah. So let's take it back to sophomore year of high school, my wow. Spanish class. <laughs> um, I was assigned to just make like a little city model. Like It was like a 3D city model. Basically, it was just to teach us words about cities. So like stop signs and um, like la biblioteca and stuff like that. <laughs> um, 
And then I put it together and I realized I really enjoyed doing like the city planning, city planning portion of it. Um, so I was like, you know what? I want to be an architect. And so I went through all of high school wanting to be an architect. And I applied to a lot of schools architecture, except for the few that required a portfolio. And USC was one of those. So I just by chance was like, okay, what is the next best thing? Civil engineering. So obviously I wasn't like destined for it. Like I didn't think this was my passion. I was like, you know what? It's what I can do. I get accepted as civil engineering structural. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, I didn't feel very passionate about it. But I did more research into the civil program and I realized that there was like a lot more emphases that I could look into, which is how I found building science. And it was saying how like there's a large emphasis on design and you're it was cool because you can think about design in a space that's not just aesthetic but also very logical so you're thinking about how to design something but then also the structural components that go into it and I feel like typically a lot of schools you're thinking only design you're thinking only structural whereas this program let me think both ways and I was like you know what this is perfect for me and that's when I started feeling really passionately about it because I was going to be able to take architecture history classes and take studio classes every semester while also still getting my civil engineering degree so it worked out really well that I didn't think that I was going to be passionate about my major and then I did my research and I was like, nope, this is the perfect route for me. For sure. And I'm glad that you kind of talked about that because I feel like so many people think that you have to have this love of engineering at first. I'm like, oh, I'm knowing exactly what I'm going to do. And you kind of realize that, well, you sort of fell into it just by happenstance of, oh, you applied, you know, civil structural and you found civil building science, which I think the program certainly isn't talked a lot about. I was just talking to someone else who's also a junior in civil building science. I said, yeah, it's not really talked about, but boy, if you find the major, you realize it's a great combination and you're doing like really fun, really cool projects um, in it. I, I don't want to deviate too much from kind of what I had an idea, but I was just curious, like what's one of at least like more of the, one of the more fun projects you've had the chance to work on and design and build um, as a result of your major? Okay, so this one was really fun. It was my second year um, at USC. And so this, the second year studio is really emphasizing materiality. So like the, how materials function, how they work together. And the project was to construct a tower based off like only paper, but you couldn't use tape or glue or anything at all. So it was literally just like origami paper and you had to figure out how to make it stand and connect it with just paper. Again, like no adhesive whatsoever. And obviously you guys can't see me, but I am 5'1", so I'm pretty <laughs> short, but I made this tower like taller than I, like it was like a six foot tower. And I used like tetrahedrons that I had to like reinforce with like two to three layers. And then I made it stagger towards the top. And then I like twisted these little paper tubes. as like the connection members. Um, so that was really cool because you can like you delve into different types of shapes. And also you have to think a lot about the material you're working with, which is really like reflective of what you do in the real world because you can't just think of an idea you also have to think about how, what is it going to be made of and how is it going to interact with everything around it um so that was like one of the coolest projects i think i've i've done in my four years here wow sounds very cool also very funny you mentioned your height um i guess i have always known you in person i didn't think you were tall or short because i just knew your height but people have very interesting height perceptions over zoom i know i definitely dealt with this over zoom very <laughs> random but if you've heard me for a couple of times, you can, I want you to guess what my height is. Let you think, let you think, <laughs> let you think. When I got to the campus back, people thought I was like five, six. I'm six, one. Just wants to be known there. I'm tall. Okay. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> he I wants the world like, to know he's tall. <laughs> I, I mean, it's also, it's also on like any of my pictures. But I just thought it was very funny, like height, very cool. But I, nonetheless, beyond that interesting point about Zoom tech, it is very cool that you're able to have like that ex design studio experience. We're talking about materials because I, I you get to think of materials in like the structural sense and whatnot, but in the sort of design sense, it's very cool. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that's like definitely something to know about the program is something you probably wouldn't be able to get if you were maybe just the standard civil engineering major or if you were an architecture major, because you have both the understanding of a material from structural point, but also from like a design standpoint. And it's kind of a good balance as things all should be. Exactly. Yeah. Because as a civil engineer, people typically go into architecture, engineering or construction, uh, whereas the building science major allows you to put on all three caps at the same time. Lovely, lovely. So speaking of putting on caps at your time at USC, I'm sure as a civil engineer, 
you've had opportunities to have many professional um, opportunities. So kind of talk about those professional areas and opportunities you've gotten and, you know, your experience in them so far. Yeah, so I have had the opportunity to do two different internships. So starting my, this was the summer after sophomore year, yes, I interned at Swinnerton Construction, which is a construction management firm. And um, a lot of people have like a misconception about when I say like I work in construction, they think I'm the one on site with like the hammer, like nailing things in, drilling holes and stuff. That is not... um, my job i do the more management portion where it's a lot of like quality checks so you walk through the work with the different um trade partners tell them what to do for the day and then once they finished you do a quality check on it and there's a lot of like about sequencing how the trades can work on top of each other like just to give you an example um there will be two different trades that come in to do miscellaneous metals and glazing and so miscellaneous metals is in charge of doing the flashing which is like the waterproofing around a windowsill and obviously you can't have the glazing be installed before the flashing so like that type of sequencing is something that we are in charge of so it was a really cool internship i spent every day on a construction site um Obviously, like, I don't know if you guys know this, but the construction management industry is like very male dominated. Obviously, it's taking a shift towards um, incorporating a lot more women presence. But on my side, I was like the only female on site. So working with that was really interesting. I had my own porta potty, should put my name on it. Um, (laughs) So that was really cool. And then I also did half of that summer in estimating, um, which is just pretty much what it sounds like. You estimate the cost of a project by looking at 2D plans and kind of figuring out how much everything's going to cost. Uh, I enjoyed the more on-site work a lot more, but that was cool. And then the other internship I did was at Arup, which is an interdisciplinary engineering firm. So they hire engineers like structural engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical, just kind of across the board, like everything you need to put into a building, they hire you because um, they focus on buildings. I worked on their BIM team. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. So it was all about like 3D modeling buildings, um, looking at 2D plans and then making that into a 3D plan. So that was really cool. We also did, uh, what is it, Um, visual scripting. So it's kind of like coding, but instead you're using like physical nodes to kind of create shapes that you typically can't hand build. So if you needed like a certain pattern on the facade of a building, then you could use like visual scripting to do that. So that was really cool. And yeah, those are my two internships. Well, that sounds really right, especially that visual scripting thing. Like as a, someone who does some code, I'm like, well, like the design process between behind that sounds pretty sick. And I, I'm guessing that it was relatively not easy, but opportunities were plentiful um, in the construction industry for you. Would you say so? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So something I haven't mentioned yet was I'm part of this organization on campus called Construction Management Association of America. Um, And I've been part of it my entire four years. It's a pre-professional like development club and they bring in companies every single week to talk to students and like basically recruit them for internships and full-time jobs. And so I had so much face time with these companies starting my freshman year and they already like knew who I was every single year. So it was really like it was obviously kind of easy to get interactions with them. Um, I think that kind of goes across the board, not just for civil engineering. I think a lot of clubs and different uh, majors get to do this. Obviously, I can only speak on the construction portion of it. And funny enough, I even got my internship at Arup, which isn't a construction management firm, but I still got it through this organization because of how closely like construction management and architecture works together. So I was able to be given opportunities like in multiple different fields um, that civil engineers can go into. Very cool. Very cool. And it's funny you talk about CMA. That was the next thing I was going to talk about, just some of your on-campus involvements. And what Natalie did mention that she is the president of CMA, our, our humble <laughs> uh, civil engineering queen here. And so kind of like talk about like uh, that experience as well as any other uh, on-campus organizations or clubs you've also been a part of um, that you work on outside of class that aren't internships. For sure. Yeah, obviously. So as I mentioned before, my main commitment is CMA. Um, it's I mentioned before that it was like a professional development club, but it's also a competition club. So we have five teams that we send to this competition every year in Reno, Nevada. And the five teams will have a different problem statement that they work on. So the categories could be something like commercial. So you will do a problem statement based off of a commercial building. Um, The team that I competed on was design build. So design build is a different way of delivering a construction project. Instead of doing all the architecture at the front 
at the front and then construction after, you're actually doing it at the same time. So the architects don't make any decisions that aren't actually constructible because I feel like that's where there's a lot of more room for error. It can be very back and forth. Whereas if you work on it all together, then the buildings like build a lot more efficiently. So that was my team. Um, it's a really cool opportunity. You get to present in front of like hundreds of different companies and there's a big job fair. So that was really fun. And then I'm also a general member of ERI, which stands for Earthquake Engineering Research Institute. And this one is based off of you design and then you build a little mini skyscraper. And I say mini, but it's actually like probably like five feet tall and has a footprint of like two by two feet. So it's still a very substantial building. Um, you have to design it structurally and then you actually build it. So you, we order balsa wood, then we laser cut the balsa wood and then we glue it together. Then you put it on a shake table to simulate seismic waves. And then you have to put it under different shaking levels and see if it stands. So that's also a competition based club. And actually I didn't go this year, but that is actually happening right now. And today they shook our building and it did not fall. It actually withstood all the shaking. So that was a great success. Um, so, you know, congratulations to the team that's in San Francisco right now. And then lastly, I am I used to be involved in American Society of Civil Engineers, which is like your very baseline civil club. It's the one that all the first year students join because it's in the name. And it's the really well-known competitions like Concrete Canoe, Steel Bridge. So Concrete Canoe is when you make a concrete formula and then you mix the concrete yourself, then pour it and put it into a mold, into the shape of a canoe, and then you practice rowing it which is awesome because you get to race it against universities like across the country. Uh, I, I don't actually know how we placed this year, but the experience overall is just really fun. And then Steel Bridge is you have to get licensed in metal welding, which is bizarre for like knowing that college students do that. Um, and then you build an actual steel bridge that has to hold like thousands of pounds of force and it can't deflect a certain amount or else like it fails. So they spend the entire year designing and building that. So those are like the three main clubs I'm involved in. Wow. <laughs> Definitely a lot of involved, lots to unpack there. First of all, I've actually seen the canoe. The canoe is in our makerspace. And this year is called the Scooby Canoe. It's oh, actually yeah. it's kind of it's kind of corny, but I really like the name. It has like low-key a paint design on it, uh, of like some type of like waves and like the some type of stars. I thought it was SpongeBob themed for some reason, but then I saw the Scooby Canoe, so oh, it's pretty cool. Um also, welding and steel certification is pretty cool. They teach kids how to weld at the makerspace, but that, that steel certification seems pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm glad to see that you're like, you know, very involved and you're not just like going to class because it seems like you've been able to have a lot of like, you know, quality experiences and really getting to learn um, external things like from those clubs, like outside of that. And would you say like kind of your involvement in those clubs, like helped you get your jobs or anywhere? Like there were there some like translatable skills from being in those student, student orgs that were you saw on the job site were somewhat useful. Yeah, so I haven't mentioned where I'm actually ending up. So after graduation, I am moving to San Diego and I am getting a, I already have a job lined up in construction management. And I, we don't actually take any classes in construction management. So I had no idea what that was until I joined the club. And I think joining all those clubs really informed what I wanted to do with my life because like I said before, there's three different paths that most civil engineers go. And I didn't know what those actually entailed until I got to talk to industry professionals who came to visit these clubs and really learn firsthand what inspired them and what drove them to make the career choices they did. And then I was able to pinpoint for myself that all the work that construction management does is everything right up my alley. It's all about building networks and creating relationships with people and thinking about things in a more physical, constructible way, as opposed to more like technical and theoretical. And so I'm a very like hands-on person. Like I like to see things being built. I like to see a completely blank dirt patch of um, land. And then a couple of years later, there's an entire building there. And you're, you, I get to say, I had something to do with that. Like you see that glazing, I picked it. Or like you see those <laughs> doors, I ordered it or anything like that. Like it sounds kind of lame and a little bit nerdy, but it's what I'm passionate about. So I, I love it. I can't wait for the first time I get to drive past a building and be like, mom, I built that. <laughs> so that's going to be super fun for me. I haven't gotten to do that yet, but you know, it's going to happen soon enough. And 
And yeah, and like I obviously did consider going into structural engineering and I considered that because of the classes I took and the clubs I was involved in. And I did an internship at like a very structural heavy firm because I wanted to make sure that I made the right decision about my career and I wasn't going to be able to do that unless I saw different sides of it. So it, yeah, pretty much like my club experiences, my class experience shaped who I am today and is probably going to shape the rest of my future. <laughs> That point about being able to point by, uh, like point at what you've built and be like, I built that. That's so cool. And I think that's one of the pinnacle of what's cool about engineering is that you get to make something and then you show it off to the world and be like, see this and like, oh, do you like it? And they're like, yeah, it's just a great building. Like, I really like X part or Y thing or like Z, whatever. And they're like, yeah, I built that. Or like, oh, I did that. And I think that's definitely one of the more rewarding things about like being an engineer, especially having something tangible built. So like when you're mechanical engineering, you're like, oh, you see that airplane? Like, yeah, I, I picked that out. Or like when you're, I don't know, a chemical engineer, like, oh, you see this cosmetic that we built? Yeah, like I was able to produce that. So, you know, so there's some engineer like, oh, yeah, I picked that out. So that's something that is like super, um, super cool. And like, it's something yeah. that I feel like most people kind of get in, like, it's not nerdy at all to like that. It's like, that's the <laughs> pinnacle of why we're in engineering school. If we, did, if we didn't like it, we wouldn't be here. And it's certain, it's not nerdy at all. It's in fact, pretty rad. I guess I'm also a fellow nerd because I think it's pretty cool, but maybe that's just me. I mean, it lets you give back to society in a creative way. Instead of just being like only STEM, you also get to be the arts as well, which is the best part. That's cool. Especially because STEM does require a little bit of creativity in terms of like you can't have like stale building designers or just creativity in solving problems. Uh, but that could be a whole other podcast episode just talking about <laughs> why STEM requires a decent amount of creativity, not like artsy level creativity, but like in you know creative ingenuity and things like that but we're gonna yeah. go, go down that rabbit hole <laughs> for this so i i wanted to talk about like some of your experience on campus and like your experience like as a student um i know that obviously you're a woman you mentioned that you're a woman in a particularly male-dominated field and you're also like a first-generation student as well with something i relate to as i'm also a first-generation student so I, I was just curious to know what your personal experience was like having those identifying factors um and also you know, being a student at USC, like how did that feel? Yeah, I think my experience at USC is very different than it would have been at any other school. I think that's like, you know, that's a given, but especially so because I've had a lot of interactions with civil engineer students from a bunch of different universities, just from all the cons um, competitions I've done. And you would have, you would be shocked to know that at USC, I want to say like 70% of the civil engineering students are women. And that is very surprising considering that in life, I think only 8% of the construction industry are women. So it's kind of like flipped on its head at USC. So I personally was never worried about um, not being able to have a voice or feeling marginalized at all because I felt very comfortable in the space that I was learning and growing in. And I think I'm very thankful and grateful for that. Obviously, in the real world, I've had to like face some adversities there. Like I said before, I was like the only woman on the construction site. And sometimes it can be a little more difficult, you know, finding your grounding there and finding a person you can relate to. But at USC, that was never really a problem. And on the whole the whole vein of being a first generation student i think this kind of speaks to it is that i have grown up in southern california my entire life like i was born in the city of orange which is in orange county for those of you who are familiar with socal geography and i've like moved around all around socal but i didn't know that usc was a school until my senior year of high school and i think that's just because i didn't really grow up in an environment where my parents were talking about college a lot because you know they didn't go themselves they came here from vietnam when they're like around eight or ten years old um so they're very unfamiliar with the like what college is in the u.s and so i didn't learn about this very major school that was only two hours from me until my senior year and i got so much support through that like the financial aid worked with me really well to make sure that i had all the resources i need and I don't know, I never felt behind. I never felt out of place. I think maybe I started a couple steps behind the starting line, but everything has like equaled out. Like I feel up to speed. I think I know enough to like pass on knowledge to, you know, other first generation students or anyone who has like my little cousins who have questions about what college is like. And I really thrived in this specific university environment. Thank you for that. I like, I'm glad that you have felt like it's been welcoming um, for you. 
I know that's like a big concern for a lot of people out there that, you know, USC does kind of have the, the, oh, you know, it's a, it's a very nice school. It's very fancy school and the school is quite expensive. And so there can be some stigmas about the type of people who go to USC. And so being people who don't quite fit that stereotype of, you know, the rich and famous, the rich and well office, like, Hey, you know, we're students here. We're, you know, the first in our families to go to college, which is a major deal for folks like that. And seeing you didn't feel, you know, behind or ostracized in any way is like a, a very important thing. So you do have to live here for four years. You have to find your community here and whatnot. Not to mention the stat about the women. Um, I know the Turby is 50, 50 women, uh, men and women, and that varies by department. So some departments are more women, some departments are less women, the overall status for everything. But to hear the civil engineering department is 70% women. I mean, I, I don't think I know of another school who has that many women civil engineers. Like, yeah, at least that's the case for my class. Like for sure, my class, I think it, it may vary class by class, but like from like this, the, my cohort that we've like all kind of grown together for the last four years. Yeah. Yeah. And of course it would be our class for context. The whole 50, 50 men and women thing started with the fall and coming class of 2019, which is our class. So like if there was ever a class supremacy, like say that the old oh, coming class, like <laughs> we, we, we started it. Okay. You know, we, we were the first ones to hit the trend of like, yeah, gender equality in the numbers. And like everyone else is just kind of following our footsteps. Um, and they're following the footsteps <laughs> of Natalie and the, the the women civil engineers. So let it be known. Let it be known. Oh, yeah. And also, I would like to mention that the three clubs that I mentioned before, CMAA, ERI, and ASE, all civil clubs, all female presidents this year. So I think give, that's a flex. Give us some snaps for that. I'm not going to snap because I don't think it's going to pick up well on the audio by any means. <laughs> but give, it, give a snap. Give a clap for that. Um, especially because that, that's just so important. Like there's been, you know, so many marginalized groups, so many people who just haven't really been represented in these fields who can do great work and whatnot. It's like these people also, you know, need to have a voice, need to be recognized and need to be given a chance and not felt like you're lesser than because you're in it. And I'm just glad that there's a lot of representation in the field and that there's a lot of um, people who are pursuing it. Um, because, you know, some, I don't know, sometimes things go wrong. You're like, dang, that building was wrong. It's like, well, it's a bunch of men doing it. I guarantee if you had a different group of people building it, things might end up differently. So I'm very glad to see that there's like women leaders and different people from different backgrounds leading the way to make the changes. Cause I don't know. I like cool buildings. Buildings are like the pinnacle of our society. So kind of needs them to be cool. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a very exciting time to be a civil engineer. I feel like everything is shifting and changing. Like everything's getting more technological and everything like demographic wise, everything is changing too. So it's, it's really exciting to be in like the oldest engineering field right now. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you guys don't know, um, well, I should have should you guess, but yes, like civil engineering is the oldest major at USC Viterbi, um, in Viterbi. Specifically. It was the only one. And things like 1905 was when this engineering school opened. It was in civil engineering. If you ever come to campus and like they ask you, and it's like, oh, what's the oldest, you know, engineering major at USC? You guys will know because you listen to the podcast or listen to Natalie tell you. Exactly. The major. So <laughs> you get extra points. Um, you know, we'll, we'll remember you. Um, at least I'll remember you. I'll try to. I'll ask who listened. Um, <laughs> but we, as we kind of wind down our time, I do have a couple more questions, but I want to know like about as far as, you know, finding a community at USC, how would you say that's been, um, you know, was how different was the environment at USC different high school? And how did you find that community, those friends in that place where you felt like you belonged? Yeah. So I think that I was a little bit more well-equipped to come to USC than maybe some other students because my high school was very large. I think we had 700 students in my graduating class so like pretty substantial and obviously USC is much bigger than that but um you know once you get to a certain amount it just all feels the same you're just like lost in a big crowd um so it was a little challenging at first kind of figuring out where I would fit in and so my freshman year I lived in McCarthy dorms which if for those of you who don't know to live in McCarthy you have to be a scholarship recipient of some kind it could be like half full quarter whatever um, you just have to be a scholarship recipient and you can live in McCarthy and so I think that was really helpful in finding my community because I was surrounded by students who potentially had like very similar backgrounds to myself um, who needed like scholarships to come to you know, like such a prestigious university like this. So I was able to find a lot of common ground with the people who were on my floor. But apart from that, I think my kind of group came together through just like random things like the welcome concert. I met some people there, Splash Bash, which is where all the freshmen get to take over the big Olympic sized pool. Um, so it's just like you just like run into people. And 
even though USC is a big school, you kind of end up realizing how not big it is because you see the same faces all the time and you run into the same people all the time and then you run into someone enough and they become a really good friend of yours. So I think that's the really awesome part. And I know you, like Cameron, you mentioned before that some people have a misconception of USC that is like for the rich and famous. But I think that's the great part is that because it's such a big school with such big resources, you're going to find your little niche. You're going to find your little group because there's so much to offer. Like we have amazing arts programs, amazing sports programs, amazing like um, music and STEM. And like you're going to find what you're interested in. And there's like a plethora of clubs to join and people to meet. So it was very scary at first. But I think I was able to find like the perfect community that just like welcomed me. You know, I was listening and I got caught up in remembering the splash bash at the beginning of our freshman year r.i.p splash bash you will be sorely missed but oh my gosh wait did they cancel it well it hasn't happened for the past two years it just i just don't think usc wants to bring it back admittedly it it was like the the worst logistical challenge in like in history i mean oh you basically take the aquatic center two stories and like pack it full of like sweaty freshmen and like vendors and like pool toys and a dj and like i know probably took that's like drain probably the entire pool to clean it up it's like i don't i don't think it's olympic size it could be though it's like huge um yeah it probably is not besides they were just playing water polo the other day. I think it was like USC and Stanford, like women's team were like best in the country play water polo. Anyway, like it's a logistical nightmare to try to clean that thing up after the freshman, just like, you know, party in it um, sanctioned by the school, mind you. Um, yeah. I mean, now you're going to make all the, the listeners wish they had it. <laughs> we're mean, just really, bragging about it. <laughs> if you want to look, you can, you can look it up online. There's actually like videos of it because of course there's someone blogger in there, but you do bring up a good point regardless about the type of people you have at USC. Like I've seen like, you know, politicians, daughters and like famous people, you know, you can look up all the famous people online. Like people have come to different parties I've been at or like we just casually ran into them um, and whatnot. And, but at the same time, you can also find that small community. I know when I came here, a tour guide told me that it's very easy to make a big school feel small by just finding a small community. But boy, it's basically impossible to make a small school feel big because just physically aren't as many heads at the school. And Mm -hmm. seems like it rang true for you and it rang true for me as well. And maybe it'll ring true for some listeners out there. I think so. (laughs) And with my final question, as usual, if you, you know the time, it's April 13th as we're recording this right now. Decision day is May 1st. And so I know that people are wondering, possibly like you, as to, you know, what they should do for college. So uh, you probably talked about a little much. You just give like your summary of why did you choose USC? Yeah, so I can give a brief why USC, but if you want to read more in depth, you can look up my why USC on our Viterbi Voices website. Just look up my name, the why USC, not to plug my own article, but um, yeah, I'm plugging my own article. (laughs) But I was going to say, so my why USC is actually just like not a why USC. It was just a bunch of string of coincidences that just kept happening. And like all signs point to USC in the end. And it started with the fact that, again, I didn't know it was a school until my senior year. I was looking. So I'm a QuestBridge scholar. So any of you who don't know what that is, it's like for low income students who are seeking um, a scholarship and admission into like a private university. I think most of the schools are private universities. Um, And so I was just looking through the list that QuestBridge scholars are sponsored by. And USC was on there. And I was like, Southern California, I'm from Southern California. I'll look into that. And then I looked into it and I was like, oh, this seems pretty cool. So then I went to like an Explore USC or something and I was talking to some admissions counselors. I didn't know who they were. Like I didn't, I just met them. I was like, oh yeah, they work here. Let's talk. And then I found out just that morning that my uncle used to work in IT admissions and I had no idea. I was just like, oh, by any chance, do you guys know my uncle who used to work here like over 10 years ago? And they're like, oh my gosh. Yes, he was this big dude who rode a motorcycle and they started telling me all these stories about him, how he pulled pranks on like all the staff during March Madness. And like it was just like this this whole thing. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so crazy that you guys actually know him based like in this giant school. And so that was the second coincidence. And then 
I also just like stumbled upon the scholarship. Like I applied to USC kind of early, not for any particular reason, just because like I wanted to get the application out of the way. But I didn't realize that if you applied early enough, then you get rec- like um, considered for a merit scholarship. And so I got this email in January saying, oh, congratulations, you've been accepted to USC. And I was like, why are you telling me in January? I, I, like, doesn't this happen in March? Like I was so confused. And then I did research about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. So It was just a bunch of random things that just kept happening that I was like, USC is the place I felt I most belong. Like it felt like I already had a family waiting there for me. Um, And I can't really put it into words except like the signs pointed to USC and like I can't fight the universe. So. Wow, that's a good way to put it, because I don't think any of us can fight the universe and the universe pointed you to USC. And who knows, maybe someone out there else will point to USC and have the universe send them here. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good way to end it. Natalie, it's always so fun for context. Like Natalie and I have been knowing each other since like fall semester, freshman year. So like we're very good friends. We've known each other. And it's funny, like all this time now we're finally graduating. Um, but thank you for coming on the podcast. You're such an exceptional student, have been involved in so many different things, so well accomplished. And just I hope that this serves as inspiration for anyone out there who feels like they at least have a little bit of the same, you know, ideas and or life and can take inspiration from Natalie. And, you know, maybe you see this as a sign that, hey, civil engineering is for you. USC is for you. Engineering is for you. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I had a great time. And obviously, Cameron, you are also an accomplished student. I am so happy that we are wrapping up our four years of USC together. Yes, it'll be great. We'll cross the stage. And I think just under a month, it's uh, commences on May 12th and it's April 13th. So just under a month. Um, Very bittersweet. Yes, very bittersweet, but a well-deserved and well-earned engineering degree, tell you that much. Um, So (laughs) with that, have a good night, Natalie. And as always, fight on. Fight on. And welcome back. Again, thanks to Natalie for joining the podcast. Natalie is one of, again, my old friends all the way from fall semester 2019, a freshman year. And it's not only is it great to interview uh, an old friend on the podcast, but it's just also fun because she has such an amazing story and she's so well accomplished, taking advantage of so many of the resources of Viterbi and just kind of shows that even in a field where historically hasn't been represented by people who look like her and come from backgrounds like her, she's still making her mark. She's still excelling and she's still being great and having an impact and being a great engineer. And I hope that that serves as inspiration to some folks out there who maybe feel some of the same feelings that she may have felt and realize that you too can do it and you too can thrive. And Viterbi definitely gives you the space to do that. Speaking with that, as you guys know, it, and you guys are dealing with right now, this is the time where you're essentially deciding where you're going to be for the rest of your four years, where you're going to go to college. And so as things are winding down, you guys probably have tons of questions, have things to answer. And so if you're not able to make it to some of the on-campus events, you're also able to reach out to us and ask questions specifically to current students. If you're looking to ask questions to current students, such as myself, you can always reach out to the email vstudent at usc.edu. I'll drop it in the description of the episode. It's everywhere. And essentially, it's an email monitored by us current students where you can ask us questions and get the perspective of a real life student, someone who is here and actually has a good answer for that. It can be anything related to housing, major, a bunch of other things. And it's really cool. Um, beyond that, also take a look at our website, the Viterbi Voices. Po- beyond that, also take a look at our website. The Viterbi Voices blog is something that a bunch of students contribute to, and it's viterbivoices.usc.edu. There's so much content up there, and there's so many blogs about why students want to come to USC. I know I've written one, and reading the blogs are actually really cool, especially reading the senior ones, since I know for me, when I was a senior in high school and why I ended up choosing the USC, it's very different from why I have chose to stay at USC now being a senior in college. And so reading those blogs is really cool. Not to mention, there's so much other content up there besides just why people came to USC. There's literally like blogs about roughly everything you can imagine about being a college student. So make sure to take advantage of those resources, read those, because maybe you'll find something in some of those blogs that kind of jogs your brain or hits a nerve and kind of really resonates with you and changes your perspective on what you are looking for in college and maybe hits a note for you regardless of where you decide to go. So take a look at that, the V student email, as well as the Viterbi Voices blog, and good luck as you guys are going into the final push to decide where you want to go to school. With that being said, thank you guys for listening. Have a great week wherever you guys are listening to this from, and we'll be back next week with another episode of the Viterbi Voices podcast. (laughs) 